Hey friends, welcome back to Adobe's YouTube channel. I'm Jess Goldsmith, partnering with Adobe to bring you an exclusive eight-part series on mastering typography and text-based design in Adobe Illustrator. Today, we'll be exploring some advanced tools and techniques for working with type. Also, if you haven't already, start thinking of a word or short phrase that you want to work on designing through these episodes with me. I do recommend using something short to start off with to make it a little bit easier for you while you're still learning. I'm gonna be using the word create, and starting off with the font Cooper Black Italic. It's available for you to use on your Adobe subscription. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use and apply the Type on Path tool, Area Type tool, Touch Type tool, and Envelope Distort. Episode two, exploring advanced typography tools. Type on Path tool is great for when you want your type to go on a path. But what's really fun is that you can make that path anything you want. Let me show you. First, you'll need to have a path. The most common way I use this tool is with a primitive shape, usually a circle. I like to remove the fill color so it's just a stroke on the circle. You don't have to do this. It's just part of my personal workflow. Click and hold the type tool and select type on path. All you need to do now is click on the path and ta-da, the type is on the path. I'm so proud of you. You can move and adjust the text by using the anchors on the path. You can also flip the text to be on the inner path of your shape. This works with any shape, so go ahead and make a cute little blob by grabbing the pencil tool, keyboard shortcut N, and do the same steps. Look at you go! You can also use this tool on an open path. Check it out here where I make this cute little squiggle and follow the same steps. That's all fun and cool, but what if I took it a step further? I already used the pencil tool to write out the word hey. I followed the same steps and boom! custom typography. Heads up, that last technique won't work with a font or what we call live type. There is a way to type on the path in your text, but that's a little bit more advanced and for episode three. Okay, let's talk about area type. This is going to be where you can contain your type inside of a shape or a closed path. Make a shape, I'm using the circle again, and find the area type tool. It should be in the same spot as the type on path tool, but if you can't find it, don't worry. Hop on down to the three horizontal dots at the bottom of your toolbar. Here you can find a ton of tools that might not initially be showing up. I like to call it my garage. Scroll to find the type section, then click and drag the area type to the toolbar. I keep mine grouped with the type button. Make sure you've selected area type and then click on the path. If you click inside, it won't work. A note on that, I'll be going over compound paths in episode three as well, but for right now, you can think of a compound path as a shape with a hole in it. Think of the letter A, the letter R, or a donut. Quick location change. This next tool is so fun and so easy to use. The touch type tool. Type something out, then grab the touch type tool the same way you did the area type tool. You know you've selected the touch type tool when your cursor changes to a little box with the T in it. Go ahead and click on one of the letters. Now you can use the points on this bounding box to make edits. You can scale size, change the angle, change the height. I don't know why, but I think this is just such a cute tool. And what's really great about it, other than it being very cute, is that it keeps your text live. Live text means that it still exists as an editable font. So if you make a spelling mistake, a client wants changes, or you just want to switch up the font, you can easily do that. It's important to note that when editing text with the touch type tool, you'll need to highlight the individual letters if you want them to stay the same. For example, if I want to change the word from create to camera, when I just type it out, there's no cute wonkiness to it but when I highlight each letter, it keeps the same properties. You'll likely need to adjust your characters either way. You might have noticed that a little A popped up when I was editing the word create. Many fonts come with alternate versions of characters and symbols that aren't used as often as the standard character. Sometimes they even have cute little illustrations. But where are they? Where are the turtles? Where are they? Calm down, it's in the glyphs panel. Get to the Glyphs panel by opening the top drop-down menu at the top of your screen and selecting Glyphs. Here you can view all of your options. This font doesn't have a whole lot of extras, so let me show you one that does. This font is called Victor Script. Check out all of the alternates and extras I have in here, including illustrations that I can add in. It's so fun. Last, but certainly not least, let's get into envelope to start. First, type out your word. I'm using a chunky sans serif for this to make it a little bit easier to start off. Make a circle, make sure it's on the layer above the text. Go to Object, drop down menu, hit Envelope to store, and then Make with Top Object. You can also use the shortcut Option Command C. Oops, sorry, forgot to add this in. When you want to create the envelope to store, you need to make sure A, that the shape that you want to distort as is on top of the text, and B, that you're selecting both the text and the shape before you go to envelope to store. 
okay, you know what would be cool? If I can make this text round like a circle, but not like the area type tool, I kind of just want it to be the circle, you know? Okay, I'll just show you. I can separate the text into three different pieces of live type, and then I'm going to cut the circle with my knife tool. The knife tool is usually found grouped with the eraser, but if you can't find it, check the garage. Cut the shape by clicking and dragging over it. Now the circle is three individual shapes. Then I can repeat the envelope distortion process, but separately for each piece of text. Again, make sure that the circle shapes are on the layer above the text. So much cooler, right? You can adjust these assets individually to your liking. Now, I want to note that this is still live text, so you'll have the ability to change the font and text if you want to. That's all for today, but in the next lesson, I'm going to be talking more about live text, compound paths, custom envelope to store, and more. If you don't know what all that means yet, don't worry about it. Basically, we're going to be making sticker designs like these, and I am so excited. Thanks for tuning into this episode. I'm Jess Goldsmith, and I'll see you on episode three.